Okay, welcome to ICT Integration Workshop 3. Today we're going to be looking at presentation tools. Um, as always, there'll be a discussion board that follows this, but today we're going to go over general presentation. I'll talk a little bit about IWBs, look at some alternative tools, and then we're going to look at Poll Everywhere and Prezi. And I'll be doing a slightly different method. So, first of all, contents delivery. So, at the moment, we're in a lecture style classroom where I'm teaching and you're listening. It's the same as most classes. Uh, it, it, most of the time the students are just going to be sitting there bored. Um, so what you need to do is find a way that's actually going to engage the students. Now at the moment I'm facing you, I'm talking to you, but there is no content that I'm actually delivering to you. There is nothing up on my board at all. So number one, I'm not prepared. Right, so for example, if I'm going to go and turn and keep doing my talk, what are you doing while my back is to you. Okay? For a start, you notice you can't even read half the stuff I've written. I actually need to move out of the way. So you either need to learn to write like this, or if you're left handed, so on. Or, and also the other thing you notice is when I've got my back to you, you can't hear what I'm saying. So this style, very poor, very, very poor method. All right. So think about your presentation sense. The better organized you are, the better it's going to go. Now, we're going to do something just a little bit different. The next thing we're going to go through is Prezi, which technically is just another way of doing a PowerPoint, but it's also a, a different way of teaching. So if you just go to Prezi on Google and just go to the Prezi software, it'll come up to here. You can go get started, log in, and you'll need to create a new account. Now you can see here there's different licenses. If you go public, it's free. Otherwise you can pay for for your trial. However, if you go down here to student and teacher licenses, it's a different cost. So you can actually do this one for free. Uh, 500 mega storage, it's really, um, really good and it means you can create things online. Now I'm gonna go to mine, which I've already logged into. So I'm going to start with a new Prezi and I'm gonna teach you the next part of the presentations whilst teaching you how to use Prezi as well. So a little bit complicated, we'll see how we go. So we log into Prezi, it's setting up, basically it, if you can imagine Prezi is like a wall and you just chuck your ideas at the wall, the problem with making PowerPoint is you tend to think in step by step. I'm gonna start a blank presentation, you can choose any of these templates if you want. Here we go and I'm gonna click on here and say, okay this is, um, presentation alright so and now as we said it's just a giant wall I can move around the wall I can move stuff around the wall don't, no, I don't, don't need that so I'll delete now I want to bring in some, some pictures so all I need to do is go insert images select the files where I want to go to And I uh, grab these, da -da -da, open them up, and it brings them all in. Now these are now on the internet, right? So import them all. And down here you can see my path. Now my part, my first slide is this. Now if you can imagine the, imagine it like a PowerPoint now, where you go and go from slide to slide. So I want to change where I'm presenting. So. I want to, first thing I want to talk about is uh, uh, blackboards, then uh, where's my whiteboards? Whiteboard, uh, projectors, oh, sorry, yeah, projector, 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 uh, smart board, tablet, Wacom, display pad back to here and right so there's my presentation now you can see that all I've done is I've just connected these things together so I've turned this off I can because they're connected I can move them around however I want I can choose to edit them by twisting them or zooming them or making them bigger or smaller whatever now, when I go to do my, now, if I go edit path, the path is still there. 
Now, what I'm going to do is actually is turn this into my presentation. So, present. So, Blackboard, what you'll notice, as I've said before, is you've got your back to the people. You're writing on the board, you're going to have chalk dust all over you. Very uncommon to see blackboards in schools today. Next one is a whiteboard. Now, I particularly like this classroom. This is a great way of teaching in a classroom. However, if you're just presenting and delivering content, again, you have your back to the people. You're writing, you're covering up, get out of the way of the board. You have to learn how you're right, right hand or left handed, as we said before. Now, when we get here to an overhead projector, the good thing is the content can now be delivered quickly. However, you're still in the way. You can see that this person is casting a shadow on the board. Same thing in a projector. Now, notice in the Prezi, it's zooming around. So, this guy is blinded. He's also in the way of the material. Uh, so, still a complicated way of, uh, or annoying way of presenting. This here up in the corner you can see is an e-beam, uh, which is a, it's picking up where the person is touching and interacting with the computer. So now we're actually starting to get towards an interactive whiteboard. And here is an interactive whiteboard. Again, you can see you're still facing the board, you're casting a shadow, so you can't actually see what you're doing. However, it does have the kinesthetic pra uh, practicality where you're learning and touching and interacting. Wacom tablet. So these are tablets where I'm using it to communicate with the computer. Now, realistically, an interactive whiteboard is just a giant mouse. All it is is a big is a big mouse and a screen at the same time. Here, the screen is not attached. It's just the mouse. If I go to here, a Wacom tablet, I can see the screen. I can run on this. The students here are looking at the projector in the back uh, behind this guy. Moving on to display pads. So now. Uh, same as the Wacom tablet in the last one, I apologize for the blurry Im image. I can, I can have the same thing on my, in this case, my MacBook um, and my iPad. Uh, and whatever I'm doing on this is coming up on here. Equally, whatever's doing on, on one can do on the other. So this person here is working on their iPad, which everybody can see on the screen. You can pass this around the class. Different people can take over control. Um, this is a real different way of presenting. You notice the teacher's not in the way. The teacher may be, maybe this may be the teacher or maybe everybody's a teacher, who knows? The, uh, the difference is, we're not in the way of it, the content's being projected, we can all share. All right, this is like an old school lecture theater, however, see up here, this is Google Glass. So Google Glass is where you wear, a, in a sense, a, uh, some glasses, but they have a, project, uh, a little projector or a TV screen within it. Now, if you can imagine teaching in a room where everyone's wearing glasses and they can all see what's going on, it's not that much different to this, except they're a lot smaller. Now, this may be your normal lecture theater at the moment, and you notice everybody's got computers, pretty standard. When you get to school, this is pretty much the same as what you're gonna find. If everybody's got computers, why are you writing notes on the board? Why are you not pushing it to their screen or finding some way to utilize the technology that's sitting in front of them? So now that's my Prezi talk. And you can see how Prezi can be a really great tool. The other good thing about Prezi, if I go up here to share, I can share the Prezi or present remotely, which means I'm whatever I'm presenting on the main screen, the students can log in as well. So if I share this Prezi, you'll see here, um, I copy this link and email it to someone, or I can add them by email. If also, when you do that, you can allow them to uh, to have editing control as well. Uh, I've done this before in class, so if I, in a classroom, some something a bit like this, and I just go right. Let's walk over to this person, and they take over control, and they can start talking. And then you go over to this person, and they can start controlling. So it's a real good way of, of interacting with us within the class. Now the next one is Poll Everywhere. Now as, as well as doing your pre presentations, you really want to get some audience feedback, whether or not you're presenting to a big group or presenting to your class. Now Poll Everywhere is a quick and easy uh, polling tool uh, to, 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 to determine how well the students are understanding, so live audience polling. Now you can embed this within your PowerPoint. So this is a real poll that would work right now. Um, students can, can post to this. I'm not, I haven't given you a link to it, so you can't but the students can work out whether or, not, um, whether or not they can understand the questions. You might put up something, just after you've presented something, you put it, you embed a question within it. So I'm gonna take it to poll everywhere. So 
login again you've got pricing you have to you'll have to create a poll everywhere account to do this it's free to try but you will want to um, look at again an edgy license so any uh, so here it's free for K to 12 but only for a class of 40 if you've got more than 40 in your class then you, you probably got a two big class anyway now to create to create a poll all you need to do is just go create what's your favorite color sure let's go with that uh, okay so um, are you enjoying this class question mark and you can make it multiple choice if you want true or false and we go create creating the poll and uh, now this would be sitting it's it's running right now and now I can del download it as a slide I can allow people to do it students can um, use their phones they can use their computers they can see here so here if you went submit to poll.com Johnson Labs and put, put, you would be able to go true or false there is also a poll everywhere uh, iPad app and probably Android app as well but it's a way of engaging students in the class. Now, next one I'm gonna show you is Socrative. Okay, so Socrative, this is the a newer version of Socrative. Basically we log in, so I put in my details. Again, you have to create an account. Now, you will be making many, many accounts with me and it's hard to remember everything you've done. It's hard to remember all your passwords. I personally use the same password for everything, but I just changed the, the icon at the front. So in this case, I begin with S and then put in my normal password. All right, so this is Socrative. Now to give you some idea of what it looks like for the student, this is me and this is the student. So my room is G5 at school and it's 2014. So this student logs in. All right, waiting for the teacher. So I might start a quiz. Now, what, it could be a quick question. Um, is this fun, true or false? Right, and immediately you've seen it change. I didn't click anything, it's immediately changed. Uh, and I'll go, yes, true, submit answer. And immediately you can see the answer over here, All right? which is amazing. I can finish this, um, right? So that's just quick and you can put it up on the board. The other one that I really love is exit ticket. So if I start an exit ticket, the question I might put on the board is, uh, if I'm doing chemistry, uh, what are the first 20 elements, or first first three elements? Now from students' point of view, they have to put in their name first. So I'm putting Jared, and as you'll notice, immediately, as soon as I've done that, Jared comes up. How well do I understand today's material? Uh, not very well. Submit answer, C. What did you learn? Presentation skills. Submit answer. Uh, and the question was the first couple of elements, hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, and so on. Submit answer. So it can be actually be just a question straight from the board. It can be a question you've asked, then maybe doing a prac, and you ask them to um, interact with the prac. From my point of view, here's my whole class. I go quiz in progress. I can bring up their details to see what they've written. But if I hit finish, it says, oh, what do you want to do? Let's download the report. And you can see it's downloaded. I bring this up, let's have a look. Download the report and here we go. The class scoring, so number of correct answers zero. So, because I wasn't asking any questions, how did I do it? Not very well. What did you learn? Presentation skills. So if you can imagine if you had your students do this, you'd have 30 answers. And if they all say not very well, then it gives you instant feedback that you need to change what you're doing. What did you learn? Well, hopefully they're actually writing down the, the things you want them to learn. All right, so really useful tool. So that's Socrative. That's, that is Socrative. Now your discussion board this week. What presentation tools were used when you went to school? Whether you went to school three years ago or 33 years ago. Just put down whatever was used and how are you gonna to present to your students? You may do exactly the same as what your teachers do. You may choose to do something new. And thirdly, after you've tried out these things, how can you imagine these tools used in the classroom? This week, we've covered a few of the standards, but one we're going to really be focusing on is standard two, know the content and how to teach it. All right, good luck.